This is an introduction to isotropic distillation. We're not going to cover what we have been covering before, which is the overview, calculation, process, equipment, and so on. But for now, let us stick to isotropic distillation. Recall from previous lectures that we have been talking about isotropes. An isotrope is a special class of liquid mixture. Remember, we're still talking about at least two components that boils at a constant temperature at a certain composition of A and B. Meaning that we cannot separate this because both will boil at the same conditions and both will condense at the same conditions. It behaves technically as if it were a new component, let it be component A, B, with one constant boiling point. This is of course uh, at the given temperature and pressure, well of course temperature will change, but at the given pressure we have this phenomenon. Such mixture can be separated using, uh, cannot, sorry, be separated using conventional distillation methods. So if you were to flash it, you will obtain A, B in the vapor phase or in the liquid phase. You will not be able to separate into A and B. If you, will, if you were to separate these with fractionation column, and even though you add a thousand equilibrium stages, you will not be able to separate these into A and B. If you were to do this via batch, no matter what type of arrangement you have, you will not be able to separate this into A and B. So that's the problem, guys. A temperature is reached at which the composition of the vapor phase and the liquid phase is exactly the same, meaning that this can be assigned as a unique point in the equilibrium. Actually, you will see it here. The only point in which there is no separation between the dew and bubble points. The composition of the liquid and vapor phase will remain the same unless we change uh, something. And that something is the main point of this lecture, guys. Isotropic distillation is the main type of work for isotropes or trying to desolate isotropes. Still, we can use distillation in such cases. And these are the three main categories. So first, changing the system pressure. We have been talking about pressure swing distillation. But this does not necessarily require to have two pressure columns. You can do this by changing a single column. So by definition, this will not be pressure swing. This will be simply analyzing and change your, changing the pressure of operation of the column. Also, one of the common ones will be, the most common ones will be by addition of an entertainer, which you will have isotropic distillation, the main focus of this lecture. And we also have extractive distillation, which we are not going to focus in isotropic distillation because in this specific case, we're going to be working towards extraction. And in isotropic distillation, typically we work towards the separation or changing that point and eventually recycling the entertainer while in the extractive distillation, we're going to be focusing on extraction. Make no worries, I am going to show you specifics on asiotropic distillation, on extractive distillation, and later on a lecture which uh, makes the main differences and similarities on these two main uh, processes in distillation. And the third category will be a combination of several processes, a hybrid system, either you use distillation, then use membranes and recycling, or you use distillation and then you use extraction, and so on. There are many ways in, in which you could actually add several separation systems, the so-called hybrid systems, in order to solve the asiotropic distillation. We're going to cover uh, asiotropic distillation first, which is the main case in which we add an entertainer and solve for it. Extractive distillation will come afterwards.